Good afternoon, everybody. This is Hunter Mazingo bringing you your daily market insight video here on Monday, May 9th, about 10 minutes after market close, 4.12 p.m. Eastern time here in Jacksonville, Florida. And today, again, another nasty day. There's no getting around it. Me and Don like to say we bring the facts. These are the facts. It was a brutal day. There was nowhere to hide. The S&P and the Qs, both, they both breached key levels of support. So really not a whole lot of positive out there. We're going to get into the charts. We're going to look at the indices. We're going to look at some of the names and sectors that got beat up and the very, very slim amount of stocks that actually were showing some signs of life or even green today. So let's go ahead and get right into it. What just happened? S&P, QQQ, breach key support levels. That's 300 and 297.45 on QQQ. And then for the S&P, we're talking about uh, 4,000 as that key level that was breached. Oil stocks absolutely hammered today after having a strong week last week in the face of market weakness. So we're gonna get into those charts in just a moment. And it's most likely gonna be a quicker video today. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna get through the performance here. G6 down 6%, S&P down a little over three, Q's down about four, Dow down about two, mid caps down 3.4, Russell 2000 4.21, 60 40 down about 1.8 as we actually saw bonds slightly green today and protection down 0.02%, very close to being flat today. Uh, market state and trend gauge are gonna have no changes. We are still in correction uh, and the trend gauge still remains in bearish or downtrend for all timeframes and market leaders. So before we get to the tail of the tape and we look at the S&P 500, very quickly, if you're interested in what we are doing here at Revere, if you're interested in our strategy, what our approach is, why we're very defensive, why we're pretty much in majority cash right now, uh, you can email me, you can email Don, or you can email anybody here, Tim, Dan, or Merrill at revereasset.com as well. Uh, so just don't hesitate to reach out. If you do have any questions, we're friendly uh, and we'll answer your questions quickly as well. So let's get into the tail of the tape here quickly as we have the S&P over here on the right side of the screen, you can see nasty nasty day just from the close wednesday at about 4300 right here to today we've given up 300 s p points or about seven or eight percent in a matter of three trading days here on the s p so market state like we said correction uh headwinds remain the same sentiment wise we're starting to see that spike up a little bit today put call up to 1.25 vix up around 35 today up about 15 percent in the fear greed uh, down to a 22 at the close today, minus nine from Friday, and we're now in that extreme fear reading. Uh, News-wise, you got Wednesday at CPI, Thursday PPI, obviously inflation paramount, as we've talked about, as one of the headwinds. That's something that the market is going to be watching very, very closely. What were we watching coming into today on the S&P? 50-day uh, minus 8% range, that is kind of where the lows have been, around 8 to 9% below the 50-day uh, on the S&P, that's kind of where we were here and here. And we actually tagged about 9% below the 50-day today. We broke through this 4,014 level. Uh, that was Don's, as we have here, the minus 8% from the 50-day. And then we we're also watching what would the S&P do if it got to 4,000. And it really tried its best to hold up. But ultimately, towards the end of the day, it finally gave way. And we had a little bit of a flush down below that 4,000 level um, as well. So like Don's, or like I said here, uh, the third leg down panic, third day below the 50 day, like 124, we were 9.4%, 224, we were 9.8. Today, we got to about nine, maybe slightly over 9% at the lows, the lows on the S&P being about 39.75 today. Uh, so right in that 9% range, action wise, uh, open down 1.5%. So just a nasty, nasty open, a gap down from the beginning. Uh, frozen slope down to 4,003. We bounced. We tried to consolidate, got, got back down to 4,000 uh, again and put in a, another intraday low at 4,001. Tried to come up a little bit, but ultimately we flushed below 4,000 in the last hour of trading there. Overnight range on the S&P here, uh, 4037 to 4104. Pretty quickly uh, got down below that overnight low. Um, as, as we opened, we kind of tried to move up a little bit, but pretty quickly, as you can see here with the frozen slope down to 4,003, undercut that area. S&P opened down one and a half, finished down 3.2. G6 down 6% today, continuing to really have a tough go of it. 60, 40, 1.8, grow minus 0 
sector wise, we actually had bonds green. We had staples and home builders actually green for the majority of the day, but they ended up finishing red as the market was really bad uh, towards the end of the day, like I said, slicing through that 4,000 level. Uh, so that's why these are in yellow because they were green like 90% of the day, but at the last little bit ended up going slightly red, but still relative strength compared to where the S&P was. Uh, I mean, across the board here, you can pick your your uh, sector. Most were having a really tough day today. Biotechs, gold, silver, miners, shippers, metals and mining, fertilizers, oils, natural gas, uh, and actually actual oil itself having a tough day today. Portfolio wise, we did have one buy. We bought SPY, that is the S&P 500, under this same premise here. We were It's a purely a tactical long. We will be selling into resistance with a very tight stop on this position, but it's the same uh, concept that we've talked about in exhaustion here with getting about nine to nine and a half percent below that 50 day, that has caused some rubber band snapback types of moves, as you can see here, over the course of the last three or four months. So that is the thought process there, a very tactical long that will be sold into resistance, tight stop on it. Uh, bottom line today, key level slice through, nowhere to hide. If you were in oils coming into today, and you're feeling good because they had a pretty good week last week. You really took it on the chin today. Just no getting around it. Uh, there was just really poor action in pretty much uh, every sector. A lot of the sectors that were trying to hold up, like fertilizers, oils, really got crushed today. Names down 10% all over the place and more. Uh, as far as the declining moving averages go here, declining 50, 43, 63, that continues to move down. Declining 21, 42, 64, that also continues to move down here. This was our prior close, 41.23, new year to date and correction closing lows. And then we go ahead and do the same thing today, new year to date and correction closing lows at 39.91, breached 4,000, nowhere to hide. Uh, and then this 39.84, that is the last level we've got here below as that March 2021 breakout pivot. We actually undercut that by about nine points on the S&P today as well. So let's get into it. We're going to move through these pretty quickly here. S&P 500. Like we said, we'll refresh this here so we get a little bit more accurate data. Uh, got to about 9% below the 50 today. Uh, ended up closing right there around 39.91. Uh, low of the day, 39.75. So right around 9% below the 50. That's what we were on watch for. Below this 4,000 level, this is a huge level on the S&P. Anytime you've got a big round number, whether it's 4,000, 5,000, 3,000, those are big psychological levels to the market and to individuals and traders. So uh, this is a very important spot. We tried to respect it today. Like we said, twice, we kind of bounced off of it. 4,003 here, got that bounce. We tried to consolidate above, went down to 4,001, bounced again. And then ultimately we flushed through it at the end of the day. But it's worth noting, we ended up just closing about nine points below here. Uh, so on watch tomorrow, I'd be looking for possibly a quick reclaim, or does this turn into uh, pretty harsh resistance on the S&P? Does this 4,000 turn into a level that it can't quite get back through? So that's what we're looking at here on the S&P. On the Qs, we slice through this 300 level, another big round number that's an important spot. And we also undercut this 297.45 low on the left-hand side here. So undercut that by just a little bit, about a dollar and a half. Uh, but as you can see here, right through that 300 level, we tried to respect it early in the day, uh, but ultimately not able to. Really just poor, poor action here. And you can see the Qs are actually 12.5% below their 50-day, which is about kind of where they got to on 124 and on 224. They're around 12 to 13, 14% below the 50. So reaching that extension again here uh, on three days down, same as we saw on the S&P, three sharp days down, uh, coming off the Wednesday close here on QQQ from 330 to 295, uh, a nice 10% move down in three days uh, here on QQQ. DIA has held up better, but it did just ever so slightly undercut these recent lows from 224, as you can see here, low of the day, 321.41 on DIA, and not nearly as extended to the downside either as it was uh, around this time in February. So DIA, for what it's worth, has held up better, evidenced by this RS line that's coming up uh, pretty sharply here. But this is a more defensive index in its own right. And then MDY here, losing this 450 level. So the S&P and the Q is not the only ones breaching key levels of support. This 450 level had been support a few times, as you can see here, 
on mid caps, but not today. Uh, just unable to recapture that level, just like the rest of the market week, pretty much out the gates and into the close. And then IWM uh, continues to look about the worst along with the Qs. So as you can see, we're about 12% below the 50 here on IWM, roughly about where the Qs are in regards to their extension below the 50 as well. Uh, we're already well below these recent lows and now below this 180 area as well. There is a gap to fill, I believe in the 160 to 165 range, don't know the number exactly, but IWM small caps continue to struggle along with the NASDAQ. So moving along here onto something perhaps a little positive, uh, the names that you actually saw act well today or be green today are gonna be your most defensive staples type of names. So names like Walmart, Tyson Foods, um, Hormel, right, that makes your like canned meat and chili and things like that. Uh, these were the names that were green today. Uh, GIS, General Mills, Kellogg, which has had quite a move over the last three days following their earnings reports. These are the names where you're seeing uh, the green today, as you can see. Uh, but beyond that, not much else to choose from. J&J &J was green uh, today as well, but this is not the greatest looking chart. As you can see, it's trying to reclaim the 50. Uh, so like we've talked about for the last couple of weeks, slim pickings when it comes to the positives out there, and there really just isn't a ton of it. Uh, we also did see Bond slightly green today, BNDW after some terrible action over the course of this year, uh, slightly green today, TLT, same kind of thing. Uh, eking out a green close after getting really extended to the downside here. So some life in bonds today, maybe a, a, a factor of the fear that's in the market, starting to recognize these maybe as a potential safe haven, who knows. But nonetheless, today, a little bit of, of uh, green versus the market being really red. So moving along to the bad, and there is plenty of it, uh, but I want to talk about oils because a lot of these really had a rough day, especially after having a pretty strong week last week. So first. Oxy, which I believe reports tomorrow, down about 10% today, uh, giving up basically the whole move it made last week, as you can see here, all the way back to the 50. Doesn't necessarily mean this chart is broken. These oil stocks are certainly subject to high volatility, but this is not necessarily what you want to see if you were buying this stock last week just to have all your gains erased. And there's plenty of names that look like this. DVN, and these are some of the better looking names I'm showing you here. DVN down 11%. Uh, after its big move last week as well. Names like Fang in the same space, breaking through its key moving averages down about 10% as well. Uh, RRC, Range Resources, this name just completely fell apart, as you can see, down 13% today. And even the big behemoths like Exxon, down about 8%. Uh, Chevron, about the same, down about 8% or so, 7 to 8%. Uh, and then lastly, ConocoPhillips. I mean, these are huge, huge names with huge institutional support, uh, really busting wide open a little bit today. COP down 10%. So uh, oils, which coming into this week was one of the strongest looking sectors, uh, but really it was one of the only good looking sectors in the entire market. And perhaps that's part of the reason that they got subject to such a nasty flush today. But oil is really having a tough time. Even the ETFs themselves down almost like XOP, the uh, oil and gas exploration ETF, down 10%. That's an ETF made up of a bunch of positions, right? XLE, which is dominated by Chevron and Exxon, down 8%. So really, even if you were in the ETFs feeling like you were diversified and didn't maybe have as much risk, uh, even these ETFs taking a really hard hit today as well. Uh, beyond that, it pretty much spread to every sector. Here is Wolf. This is uh, a company that's in the semiconductor space has absolutely been demolished the last three days. As you can see, they did report earnings, but from Wednesday's close at 101 to 70 today, so a, just a 30% decline in a matter of three trading days, that is absolutely brutal. AMD reported earnings, looked like it was trying to shape up, down 10% today. Uh, NVIDIA continues to suffer, down 50% from its highs, actually more than 50% now, closed down almost 10% today as well. Uh, so really, these semiconductor stocks, although they started to show a little bit of relative strength after being uh, sold off really hard, when you talk about last week, NVIDIA here getting back above 200, getting back above uh, the ADMA, just a nasty, nasty reaction and sell off in these names, as well as pretty much every other sector out there. We talked about uranium on the podcast and how this was one of the strongest commodity sectors uh, out there. 
and it has completely fallen off a cliff. This is CCJ, the number one stock in this space, down 12%. Uranium, also down about the same, down 9%. Uh, fertilizers like CF, MOS, these names having really nasty days, down about 10% here as well. MOS down 13%. So some of these names that we're holding up and trying to possibly reclaim moving averages, absolutely taken to the woodshed today, along with the oil companies here. Uh, some names that had reported earnings and had some nice relative strength last week. Lithium uh, down 13% today, giving back a lot of that. Uh, LNTH, Lanthius, been on the 21 over 21 list for a while, but nasty undercut of those moving averages below the 50, uh, down 13.5% today. So doesn't matter what sector, whether you're a lithium miner, you're a medical company, uh, you are not immune to the damage today. Airbnb down 12% today after reporting earnings last week. Just a couple more here, not beating a dead horse. I'm just showing the variety of which it ranged in regards to sectors uh, regarding the weakness today. So net down another 13% today after a nasty, awful week last week. Datadog uh, down about 12% today, undercutting that 100 level. Uh, CrowdStrike down a, another 10 or 12 percent today, as you can see. I mean, these are three days. This is crowd from 200 to 140 in three days. This is these are very, very sharp and nasty moves. It is a dangerous, dangerous market right now. Uh, so please keep that in mind. And lastly, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum just absolutely crushed today as well. BITO down about 15 percent ETH E down a little bit more, I believe, closer to 20. So the point here, nowhere to hide today, except for a very select amount of staples names like Smuckers and Procter Gamble, Walmart, Costco, Hormel, Kellogg's, those types of names. Everywhere else pretty much subject to the damage uh, and really not much positives you can make out of it. Even names that I talked about on the podcast last week that were looking pretty constructive, uh, names like Arch, you wake up today and you're down 12% at the lows here on Arch. So no, no sector necessarily immune, no stock necessarily immune either. Uh, so please keep that in mind. However, like I said, we did put on a small long today on the S&P as we uh, had that third, third day down, uh, down about 8% in a matter of three days and reached that 9% or so uh, below the 50 day. We will be selling this into resistance, purely a tactical long position here as we look to stay out of the way of the market as uh, best we can here. So that is going to wrap up the rest of today's video. Uh, I will see you guys on Thursday for the daily video as well as for the podcast this week. I hope you all have a wonderful week.